Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, The Future is BIM because information matters. We are going to be hearing from McCall Reckley from Procore Technologies, Raul Gomez from Robinson Morton, Tim Kelly from Assemble Systems, and Blake Sayers from Robinson Morton. Uh, I'm Alicia and I'm going to be your moderator for today. So if you have any questions, please make sure to ask them throughout the presentation and we will address technical ones during and any substantive ones at the end. And today we're going to be discussing why BIM is so important for your business as well as the integration between Procore and Assemble. Uh, for, and just so you get a nice little picture of our speakers, there's McCall, Raul, Tim, and Blake who are our experts for today. Um, a little bit about me, uh, Tim Kelly. I actually um, started my career as a general contractor and spent a bit of time in both pre-construction and in construction. So I've done uh, both estimating and then uh, BIM and BDC in the field, as well as uh, some project management. With that said, uh, now that I've been at Assemble, I'm currently the product manager here. And what Assemble Systems does for you is our product is totally web-based, uh, very similar to Procore. And uh, ultimately, we unlock the power of uh, building information models, um, whether design models or built in-house uh, fabrication models, uh, for use by construction management professionals. And the idea is to make it super simple to get access to the data. Um, so when you publish and consume your model information into a symbol, you can share that across your project team just by a simple invitation to the system. Um, with the symbol, you can actually uh, dig in and analyze and condition or adjust or edit your data for um, estimating use, for scheduling use, et cetera. Um, and ultimately, we share that out with, with other systems as well. So we uh, actually embed uh, the ability to view models and model data into Procore. Um, the idea there is being able to uh, invite um, it is many models into the project as you can uh, use and then get that across um, all users uh, and contributors uh, across your team. Uh, so that's all about Assemble. Um, sorry. Uh, McCall, why don't you talk about yourself and Procore? McCall Reckley, I'm with Procore, uh, formerly with a couple of other uh, construction companies. I've been in the industry about 13 years. Uh, I worked for about six years as a BDC manager at the last company, so I spent a lot of time and dealing with BIM and a lot of these other technologies involved in construction. Uh, Procore is a project management software. I actually used it as a, a, a GC at, at, for a couple of years in my last job. Right now, it's currently the most widely used construction management software. Your, your typical submittals, RFI, BCRs, all on the cloud, uh, all on mobile devices, uh, really increases efficiency and leverages mobile devices out in the field to make sure everyone has the best information uh, while they're building the job. Uh, so over to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Raul Gomez. I'm Director of Virtual Design and Construction with Robbins and Morton. Um, I have about 27 years of experience, uh, which I always I'm dating myself here, but going back to uh, early design build firms uh, out of Chicago and uh, working with companies like Abbott Labs and AECOM and mostly integrating technology throughout my journey. Uh, early adopter of Revit, was an early adopter back in 2000, integrating Revit at AECOM, and undoubtedly I saw the future of uh, BIM and the I that we're going to talk about here today that is now really beginning to take uh, take shape in our industry um, uh, more so. But my role and responsibility here is to um, visualize where we're going as it relates to technology, how we're integrating it into our process, which is construction, um, mainly in healthcare, but we also do other uh, in other sectors, which I'll talk about a little later. Um, but really, it's, it's really focusing on how we're using Procore as an end user and how we use Assemble as an end user. So as a uh, company, we're very fortunate to have both of these platforms uh, working on, on a vision that I uh, I really uh, also agree with and in regards to where we're going as a as a company. So with that, I'll turn it over to Blake. Blake uh, is our, our 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 assembled champion and uh, also involved in Procore as well. So Blake. Thanks, Raul. Um, my name is Blake Sayers. I'm a graduate of Auburn University, and I'm a user of both Procore and Assemble um, each day here in pre-con. I'm uh, one of our younger guys, um, so I'm in the trenches uh, every day as far as pre-construction is concerned. And uh, 
both software platforms have really brought a lot of value uh, to what we do here each day at Robbins and Morton. So with that, uh, Raul, you want to talk a little bit more um, about who we are as a company, some of our experience. Sure. <clears throat> so I'm highlighting uh, on our screen here right now three projects that really have been uh, impactful um, recently as it relates to technology, as it relates to structure of contract. Uh, Main General is one of our uh, highlights uh, that we have worked on the past uh, four or five years. And uh, undoubtedly, we had integrated um, a Revit and we've u utilized um, the information as it relates to that in a big way, um, all the way to even turn, turning over an FM solution uh, that was very uh, BIM-centric. Centric and uh, data related. So you'll, we'll, we're talking. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, so Main General undoubtedly was one of our, our best projects we've worked on. It was a full IPD tri-party project. Um, we learned a lot on that project, and we continue to this day to implement a lot of these similar practices um, on most of our projects, whether they're IPD or not. Uh, Baylor Scott is another one. We do a lot of design assist, which is really sort of an IPD-ish approach, where we actually have our subcontractors involved with our design partners, uh, really developing design and front-loading our models uh, early on. And of course, Baptist Memorial, which is a project as well that we just wrapped up. Um, that uh, is uh, the same approach. We always improve on how we implement technology and how we integrate through our process, trying to utilize BIM throughout our process. And I'll show some more examples here um, uh, coming up as well. So as a VDC uh, director, um, again, my goal here is to find what technology is really where we can take advantage and leverage a model that we get from an architect and how we make that model useful throughout our process. And undoubtedly, the first thing that we do that uh, Blake's going to talk about is really understand what that model um, has in it as it relates to a 3D model and how we can use it. So we really go through what we call model interrogation process to understand what is being delivered uh, that we can utilize for um, for uh, constructability and quantity extraction. So that's the first thing we go through and assemble is really that process. And now assemble does live in Procore, so I, you can experience as well within assemble or you can actually experience uh, having assemble on your desktop. Um, model coordination, I think everybody knows here that that's really our bread and butter. That's really key to our process, understanding what issues we may have uh, from a class perspective. Uh, high definition scans, we are now combining uh, scanning with modeling, supporting uh, our, our design teams uh, to be able to understand what's there and what's existing. Uh, we also use it for floor leveling as well. Um, we have our own scanners in-house, so that's something that we also um, push and move forward as a company and in integrating those in our process. 4D scheduling, uh, that, that has become a big part of what we do. Uh, most of our larger projects, I would say 50 million and up, we're doing um, our own scheduling and we do it uh, in 4D and uh, we use a software called Synchro. So uh, a little little, uh, little support there for Synchro as well. Um, virtual mockups, we're using that as well where we actually have our owners sit down and actually visualize ORs and visualize our hospitals before we actually build them to make sure everything is in the right place for them uh, before we actually build it. So robotic layout as well, um, you know, that is really taking BIM and taking geometry that we tend to vet and tend to clash with to the field to make sure we can actually now take that information and lay it out in the field with our, our robotic layout units um, that we use. So uh, once things are coordinated, we will use uh, robot, uh, robotic technology um, such as Leica systems that will help help us do that. And then mobile technology is a big part of what we do, uh, getting rid of paper and, and using everything as it relates to uh, uh, Procore is really part of uh, what we're trying to do as well, and you'll get a little more uh, feel for that today. One of the things that we've talked about uh, between the, the group of us is is actually uh, access to information, uh, timely access to information, and and almost uh, like, well, I'd say a consensus is that um, BIM as a database, as a concept, buildings equal data. That actually comes from uh, a company that's uh, no longer out there, but a really really great concept. Um, all of this stuff that we do as contractors is is centered around data, product information, cost information, uh, time information, schedules. 
Um, ultimately, as we can use that data when it's virtually constructed prior to the project starting or during the construction, um, we can make timely decisions. So when you have this ability to go and, and build something 100 times over and get the information out, or build something and plug information in and use that data to drive your next decisions, uh, you can really start to collaborate across a team. And softwares like Assemble or like Procore that are completely cloud-based, uh, that means that it, it, you don't have to be sitting in the same location to collaborate. I can be in Houston, Texas and collaborate with McCall in Boston um, or Alicia in, in California, and it doesn't really matter. Um, so being able to call that information, use that data real time, um, it, it really drives the collaboration across a project team. So um, the idea, I'm gonna go ahead and transition slides. The idea there is that as you push this information or the, the things about the project into the model, ultimately you wanna improve the project outcome. So whether that's improving schedule by running analysis 100 times over, or improving cost because you can dig in and look at quantities and, and to look at options. Um, you can very, very quickly have collaborative sessions to do this kind of thing. Um, so using the model and using something like Assemble or, or like Procore where you're, you're sharing this information so that the rest of your project team is informed and can help weigh in on options and then ultimately drive that decision. Um, we're, we're managing risk, right? We wanna actually uh, reduce any, any risk across the project, uh, whether it be actual safety and risk, cost, or schedule. Uh, we've gotta deliver projects. And so um, the idea there is that um, when you set this information up outside of a file structure and you have something that you can query and go get the information that's relevant to the conversation, uh, then you can really do something there. So um, that's kind of my take on where the industry is, is today, and, and I think in a minute we're going to talk about where we're going. Um, but with that said, we'll let uh, McCall go ahead and dig in a little bit deeper on uh, the I and BIM as, as he sees it. Thanks, Tim. Uh, so I'd like to go back to, like, the acronym. Uh, and, you know, my, my years and in being involved in BIM in construction is BIM has been synonymous with a lot of the things that don't really mean what it what BIM stands for, Building Information Modeling. They, a lot of people associate it with just 3D coordination or a logistics plan, and a lot of 3D enhances those other things. But to me, Building Information Modeling is the 3D database Tim was talking about. And that's always been like my white whale when I worked at DC is to find that perfect, you know, concert of all your project data information all in one place and that allowing the model to be able to enhance at least enhance the ability to find and get that information as quick as you can. Because my big thing is I feel like turnover is the biggest thing about the potential for BIM. Because when we walk away from the job, a construction company walks away from the job, that building is going to remain there for the next 30 to 50 years. And for the facilities people to be able to get information in half the amount of time it takes them to get it now, is going to make their lives that much easier. So if you go to the next slide, uh, you see I'm just focusing on the information. Um, and by information, I think the information falls in three major categories when you're talking about information in an object in a model, uh, in a BIM model. It's documentation, which includes warrant information, commissioning, whatever are documents that you want to add to it, whether it's particular cut sheets or something from the submittal showing exactly what type of, uh, which brand of filters need to go inside this pump or, or what, what kind of screws need to go in or what light bulb needs to go in this uh, a fixture. And then we have what's called parametric I would call property information about that object. So in this case, I'm using like a pump as, as, an, as an example, that the pump does or what exactly it does, all down the line. Uh, MEP guys get their head wrapped around this real big. You see, you, you got all this associated with the object in the model. So that, that to me is the I and them. Um, you, you know, again, the documentation, parametric information media, but if you advance one more time, you'll see that there's other things that are associated with uh, the, this object, model object as well. Okay, oh, not too much, Oops, went too far. But my point here is when we get to the animations again, you're gonna see a bunch of other stuff like cost or lead information or uh, facilities information or estimating. And it leads me to my next point, like all those four things you see down at the bottom, I still truly believe that is the I and BIM. So you go to the next slide, 
is, is my little rant on the Ds, what I call the, the too many Ds when you come to this, this, this subject, this topic. Um, you know, this industry, what, what I've seen happen over, like, since 2007 when I started really getting into them is as soon as someone discovered a new cool way of attaching different types of information to the model, they slap another D on it and give it a new name. So if I put Sylvie's information on there, it's 60 now. Or 5D if I put my cost information or 7D lead, and I'm not sure when it's ever going to stop. Um, and I really think that, uh, you know, I think we shouldn't be going down this path and start thinking more of the – the I in BIM. So uh, that's enough for me ranting on my soapbox. Uh, we will, I will turn it back over to. Hey guys, this is uh, Blake Sayers. I apologize if we have any uh, background noise. We're doing some office renovations right now, so y'all bear with me. But uh, I'm going to jump right in. I, uh, like I stated earlier, I'm part of our pre-construction department here at Robbins and Morton, and uh, Assemble really has become an integral part to what I do each and every day. Um, Symbol have really done, um, the guys and girls at Assemble have done a great job of, of creating a uh, a platform that is really geared and useful um, for us as builders, um, whether that's a general contractor or the subcontractor, being able to take a model, whether that's uh, one that was made in Revit or whatever other platform or avenue that came through, and to have an efficient and effective manner to really be able to mine that data, to get useful data. A lot of the projects that we do being uh, large-scale uh, healthcare work, um, most of the times can be very complex, whether that's phasing or tying into an existing structure, whatever that may be. Um, I have really found a lot of value out of being able to use the, the 3D model um, in conjunction with the 2D documents. Um, <clears throat> To really, to really nail down um, what we're looking at. A lot of times we're working on a uh, project. We may do sometimes two, three, even four pricing exercises on a project. And if we're at that SD or DD level, um, this is where Assemble um, has really um, been crucial for me to be able to utilize the, that extra information um, that we have. Because a lot of those times when we're only at, um, as far as 2D documents are concerned, we may be at 30, uh, 50 percent SD, DD level. Um, we can be doing just as much guesstimating as we are estimating. Um, and being able to take that information um, that may not be accurately related on the 2D documents um, by what we can find in that 3D model um, quickly um, through a symbol uh, has brought a, a lot of a lot of use to what we do here each day. I, I used it this morning. We're pricing a large project in Charlotte right now. A large a large. Uh, uh, bed tower and was able to utilize it this morning and uh, <clears throat> really lock in our, our casework package um, just because the, the schedules were kind of out of whack and you know always we get positive feedback uh, when we can do that um, but uh, I want to I'm going to actually hijack the screen here um, and, and show you guys do a quick demo we're going to skip a few steps um, here of actually how to get a model uploaded to assemble um, and I would recommend um, any of you uh, come Companies on here who, who are not currently using a symbol um, to reach out. They do a fantastic job. Um, so does Procore of sending either representatives or doing webinars to, to really get get you engaged and up to speed. Um, if you're not already, um, <clears throat> then what I'd like to show you guys um, here is actually how I was able to share some of this information with my subcontractors. But I want to talk about uh, a success story um, that that we had here. This was a, one of the first project I was a, a projects I was able to utilize a symbol on. Um, <clears throat> and one of our biggest issues uh, in the construction industry, or not issues, but hurdles as a whole in the construction industry, and I'm sure most of you guys would agree with me that are on this call, is, is good, qualified uh, labor and subcontractors to actually go out and perform. Um, a symbol has actually um, been able to help me as a uh, pre-construction guy uh, jump that hurdle a little easier. Um, and as many of you would probably agree with me that you know the best way to get good qualified subcontractors um, involved is, is to or on your project is to get them involved early. Um, and so we we have this one project um, that we were and actually here we go my screen's working now, which is perfect timing. Uh, the, this 
project that I'm going to talk about is a is a smaller job that we performed in Spartanburg. Um, we're about to wrap it up right now. Um, Spartanburg at the time was a marketplace where we had completed some work um, but didn't really have a very heavy uh, footprint um, in the area. So. Um, it was crucial to us that we had um, good subcontractors to perform the work. Um, this specific job that we're doing um, was an art center for Wofford College, which is there in Spartanburg. Um, it had a large uh, masonry uh, package. Uh, the majority of the building was a masonry uh, type structure. Uh, some of the walls were almost 90 feet tall, and uh, as many of you guys who were who were either in pre-con or, or actually involved with the construction process would agree that one of the hardest trades to find good qualified guys to come out and perform on is your masonry. Um, and so one of the hurdles that we ran into was when I was doing my calling, um, there were four guys that we had identified um, at the SD slash DD phase that we really wanted to either get on board or have good input from early on. And, and during that call process, I got one, de one yes and three we want to do the work, but we just we have so much on the books right now, and we have so much so many real dollars on the line that we're pricing right now. We don't have time. And as a the great precon guy that I am, you know your your follow up question is, well, what if I if I give you all my takeoff, if I give you my quantities, and da 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 da, then then you can get a number. Well, well that that's good depending on what you're building. Um, as far as this is concerned, you know it could have gotten us in a lot of trouble um, with some of these. <clears throat> with some of these walls being upwards of 90 feet tall, with us having a lot of, of curved walls, a lot of complicated walls. If I was to just say, Mr. Subcontractor, there's 75,000 whatever unit of measure, I would have given him a brick and gotten a unit cost. And you can you can very quickly get into some danger. So so what I was able to do, um, and keep in mind, if, if uh, I did, I, I'm weird. I like doing my 2D takeoffs as well, um, just so I can really get in the nuts and bolts of the job um, and work out of the same set of documents that the subcontractors are. But I was able to share this, and I'm gonna and my screen's loading. This is um, we have plugins um, for I square foot. I send screenshots um, of actually of, of what I'm doing to the subcontractors. I was able to get engaged. Long story short. Um, actually, those remaining three guys that weren't going to provide me a price was able to give them my quantities um, in 2D as well as 3D, um, and I was able to show these guys screenshots of what the actual project, um, what the scope of work was. That it was more than just laying a backup wall on a rectangular building, um, and you know they were able to factor in, um, you know, high strength grout, their bracing, um, scaffolding, uh, and you know their top guys to do this. And those unit numbers, um, they changed, and they they much more accurately reflected. Um, what this job was really going to cost and what it was going to take to perform this type of work. So really quickly, I'm just going to share with you guys how how quickly you can drill down. And this is a this is a pretty simple um, project right here. Um, <clears throat> but um, right now I'm 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 in the structural model. Um, I've hidden everything other than the masonry units, and you can see here where I've already gone ahead and I've I've assigned certain colors, certain tags. Uh, we talked about earlier when we started that that you can really mine the data, that you can go in there and that you can manipulate the data. That Assemble's really done a, not necessarily manipulate, but put tags on the data that's already there. Um, so I was able to and the, keep in mind this is about two years ago. So my method of sharing this with subcontractors was via screenshots. Was able to send them multiple screenshots of just the backup block. Um, that's, this is the 8-inch and 12-inch CMU isolated um, change. I said this yellow wall is, and we'll, I think this one's, the, my cursor's over. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, is about 90 feet tall. Um, so I was able to shoot that information over to those guys and send them multiple angles and views. And in conjunction with my 2D takeoff, I ended up having four numbers when it came bid day um, at the DD phase, and, and we were able to really lock down. And later on down the road, um, when we went to GMP, um, you know, we didn't run into those budget issues. We didn't run into the oh, well, we just weren't ready for this because those guys were able to upfront, um, you know, really be prepared uh, for what's coming. And then, then another, uh, and I'll, I'll hop off my soapbox here in a little bit, but uh, but another huge advantage, and Tim touched on this earlier, was that. Uh, 
that both Procore and Assemble are cloud-based, um, which the vast majority of software that I use um, here each day in pre-construction uh, is server-based, and I've either got to be at the office or go through some other platform, Citrix, whatever it may be, to have access to what we use. Um, but there's been multiple OAC meetings or meetings where I'm with an owner or with an architect, uh, design team, and we might be going through a VE process or whatever it may be. Um, <clears throat> and it's easy to get caught up when you're in those situations with it. Everybody in the room can look at a 2D set of documents and build the project in their mind. Well, in this particular instance, you know, we're building something for a college. This isn't for a, you know, multi-billion dollar healthcare system. We're sitting in front of project, you know, construction managers that work for the healthcare system that, that deal with 2D drawings all day. This is people who are going to be um, end users of this building. Um, and when we show them what we're talking about and what we're doing, we can do it in 3D being cloud-based just with it. Wi-Fi connection on campus for them to be able to understand what we're presenting to them in real time, um, we can ultimately provide a better product um, all around. Um, so <clears throat> with that, um, I would highly recommend if you guys are not users of Assemble or Procore, um, once again, to reach out. Um, they really do a good job of I'm sending representatives and, um, or, and doing webinars of, of really catching those um, who may not be too familiar with their products up to speed. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn my screen off and we will keep on trucking. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, this is, this is McCall again. So this is what my utopia of what a BIM turnover should be and this is where I think the most power of the IM BIM will rely. Uh, it would be a situation where you look on the left side there, you got, it could be either during construction or during an install or even during commissioning. Um, you have like these QR codes or, or RFID tags or barcodes or some sort of thing, indication on the actual piece of equipment or door or window or what have you, whatever piece of parts of the building. And you can use a mobile device, whether it's a phone or an iPad or something like that, to instantly pull like those three categories of data that I talked about. So the the biggest thing is not necessarily you're not necessarily flying through a model and like ooh look there's a pump. Maybe it, I, I feel from like you know if you're if you're doing commissioning or if you're, you're a facility the buildings turn over you're walking the actual building, um, but you still want access to all that information. So if you hit slide, so what what I would feel is if you you would. You know, what, whatever you do, whether it's RFID or if you're scanning a, a QR code, um, advance the slide, Alicia, this would ultimately pop up on whatever device you have. Uh, you have your name, you have your, your equipment name, uh, the name of it, um, you have your, some facilities information in there, uh, you have the properties of, of the object, uh, you have submittals, RFIs, warranty information, commissioning information, any videos or anything associated with it. And it's all right there in your palm of your hand. And that is, that's like the true power, to be able to access all that information associated with that thing. Now, this, is, this situation is pump, but it, it could be a window, it could be a door, it could be a sprinkler, it could be a, anything, a boiler, uh, but to have it that quickly. And I think like the concert of, um, you know, BIM, especially with Assemble and their integration, you know, we're just starting to integrate with Procore, um, but the future and like discussions that we've been having with Assemble is we're going to get to the point where all the information that you're gathering already by using Procore or some other project management solution, hopefully it's all in one place, to be able to attach that directly to objects and model uh, and it will pump out ways of getting access to that information very, very quickly. Now, whether you think it's more quicker to, to navigate through a model or to scan a QR code or an RFID, but the bottom line, and I think the goal here for everyone is to get the information very quickly so in order to make a decision like Tim says or to be able to, you know, do something very quickly because I think most of the, most of the time is wasted, uh, especially for project managers in the facility side of the house, is looking for that information. And we can cut that down to a fraction of the time by using this technology properly. So I'm going to give it over to Tim to give his utopia. I talked about it a bit before, and, and we've kind of bounced around this concept of sharing data, finding data, getting access to contribute and read data. McCall talked about being, no, no matter where you are in the field, uh, not needing to, to dig through all the other information, but be able to just jump right to the information you're uh, 
concerned about. And, and what I want to talk about really quickly is actually just a, a recent thing. I was working with a customer uh, last week where um, they shared what their organization is working on. And um, it, it really clicked in my mind that this is, this is where our industry is heading, that, that the data and, and systems, both hardware and software, uh, have advanced to the point that it's really carrying our industry forward. And I, I can't really dig into all the details. Um, I'll, I'll kind of point you to a, a paper coming out in the near future. But um, what they've actually set up is a relational database across absolutely everything that their organization touches, whether they're uh, contacts and people or purchasing and, and dollar values or, you know, uh, cost management and actual uh, schedule of values. Um, all of that is related. And – Ultimately, anything related to the actual project is um, ultimately tied to a model component, tied to an element that's modeled. And what that ultimately means for them is that they have this really, really powerful way that they can search. And it's almost like this Google concept, if you'll just kind of bear with me there, um, where you can, you can kind of key in. And it doesn't matter if you're searching for a person or a widget in the building, uh, you're able to get to the piece of data very quickly. And then on top of that, not only are you getting this visual representation of what it is and where it is in the model or what things are associated, if you imagine being inside like a cellular structure and think about a, like a visual, visual database, um, if you'll maybe think about a strand of DNA, you see what that object touches elsewhere. So if you have a design firm that's contributing information into a model and they in some way on a project in – uh, Dubai have a relationship with a supplier and then you're working on a new project with the same design organization and they're looking at, you know, uh, uh, your supply chain, uh, they're able to see those relationships. And it, and it really dawned on me that as an organization, they have instant access to relevant information for that particular decision. So they can report on it. They can dig into it. They can, um, really drive not just the project, but their organization and how they use this information. Um, then with the visual of actually having the model there, they're able to see, you know, that, that relationship between that, that spatial relationship. So not only are they able to see the supplier and the vendor, the actual uh, product data, but then they can jump right into the model and see, you know, the surrounding components and um, how many components. And that, I mean, just really the, the, uh, possibilities are endless, and, and being able, though, to collaborate across the organization in that manner is just outstanding. So I'll, I'll stop there, but I will say um, in the very near future, I, I can point you all to a, a paper that's being written about this by Fred Gibson at Bechtel, and it's, it's really, really interesting stuff, but um, that, that's kind of where I see uh, the collaboration happening and being able to share this data across your project team and use it for, for very powerful things. Paul, did you want to weigh in Perfect. there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't mind, Tim. I appreciate it. Uh, so just, just to add my two cents here in terms of what we're doing here, Robbins Morton, um, you know, one of the biggest things that we felt when we started using Procore we felt that it could be one of our uh, tools that we can help expand and help provide our vision to Procore. Um, Assemble Systems, actually, I, I want to say we were, we were not instrumental, but we were a part of encouraging um, Assemble and in, in incorporating into Procore for our use of BIM and getting that information process going within Procore and having that data begin to flow and, and start that vision. But here at uh, Robbins & Morton, you know, a, a term that I use quite a bit and I've been using for a long time is really a life cycle. And how do we treat that life cycle of BAM throughout our process? Meaning, how do we treat it during design? How do we treat it uh, optimizing construction? How do we treat it, you know, at handover and then operations of a particular facility? In our case, healthcare. And it's really the, the, that life cycle data remaining constant uh, from beginning to end. And 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 how do we do that? We need a tool to help do that. My vision. And working with Procore, I think that vision will be built into Procore eventually, along with uh, McCall's ideas and Tim's ideas and, and, and what Blake is doing. I think right now, to some extent, because software is developing quickly, um, I don't want to say it's siloed, but we still have separate softwares to do separate things. I think eventually we're going to have 
you know, everything's going to be embodied more, uh, more collaborative um, uh, than before. And I think Procore is going to help lead that direction. But uh, we're always trying to find ways to bring value to the owner. And our owner um, really is looking to change their industry and how they can automate their buildings, how they can get information quickly. McCall gave a few examples on how to be able to pull a QR code and know when it was maintained, how often it needs to be maintained, who installed it, when was it installed, et cetera. Um, so to have that information handy is important for our process, but I think ultimately it brings the ultimate value to the owner. Uh, we're very owner-driven, and we're always looking to ways to help the owner become more innovative um, and helping our process. So I think personally, um, if number one, I think if you're not using BEM, you need to. Um, for an architect and engineer, that should be a must. That should be just a given. We expect it from our architects and engineers. Internally, we are working on systems like Assemble, which assembles fairly new in the industry, but they've come a long way in terms of what they're doing and have really brought BIM to non-BIM users. So, you know, exposing it to pre-con, exposing it to estimators, exposing it to project managers. And now Procore, obviously, integrating that process helps you take that data further down stream as well. Um, we have worked with uh, a lot of facility management legacy companies, such as Maximo. Uh, there's been some solutions out there called UBIM, and they're all very data-centric, BIM data-centric, where they're extracting all the material into their building. So that's a vision that we're continue, uh, continuously pushing uh, to really give what the owner needs to basically maintain uh, their building. So uh, I think this is, we're just scratching the surface on this call. Um, I think there's a lot to come. I'm personally looking forward to, to Groundbreak. Um, I'm part of a innovation team with them and trying to help guide a vision as to what they're doing and how they're going about integrating them into their product. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of that. I do know there's other mobile platforms out there. Um, we, we, we do use BIM360, of course. That's really more of a field-oriented um, mobile technology. However, uh, Procore is working towards um, becoming very field oriented as well, in addition to PM oriented as they are now, and uh, and working that you know working that direction. So it's great to see a lot of innovation. I'm glad to be a part of it, um, and I think uh, Procore and Assemble are, are spot on in terms of where they're at and where we're going. So with that, uh, that's my, my two cents. I appreciate the opportunity for uh, to Procore to allow me to to share my two cents.